for page three of our chapter nine review for the test, uh, we're looking at another graph here. We've got y equals three all over x plus four. Remember x files. You see that x plus four? You need to think of x equaling negative four. And that's what you'll have for a vertical asymptote. Your domain is going to be x cannot equal negative four. Immediately, go over to x equals negative 4 and draw in a dashed vertical line. That's going to be a huge part of that graph. And we are well on our way. The second number that you see coming after the fraction is negative 2. We're not going to change the sign there. That's just going to be y equals negative 2. Your range is going to be y cannot equal negative 2. And go to the y value of negative 2 and draw in a dotted horizontal line. At this point, all you need to do is to get that calculator out and uh, type in your fraction. You'll say alpha y equals, and you can get 3 all over x plus 4. And then move your space over, hit minus 2. I personally recommend then hitting math and coming down to decimal. Then when you look on your table, all of your y values will be expressed as decimals instead of fractions. Speaking of that, to get to the table, we'll hit second graph. And uh, you could see it was by x equals negative 4 that we were having an issue. Now. Of course, you'd like to go at least two steps away from where you have an error. That's at negative 4. Negative 3, you can see, will be at 1. And at negative 2, you'd be at negative 0.5, which is fine. You could definitely write that in. However, I do want to point out that if you were to look at negative 1, negative 1, maybe that's even a little bit better. It's a whole number. Uh, you might just opt out for that one. And of course, is if, is if you were to continue to scroll down, you're less likely to see some friendly numbers. But if we were to go up a little bit above our error, you could see at negative 5, we'll be at negative 5. And you are more than welcome to type in negative 6, comma negative 3.5. That would be fine. But here we go again. If you look just above that at negative 7, we're actually at negative 3. I'll be honest with you, I think that's a friendlier point to work with. And it very well could be easier to graph. So if we change our color here, here's what I'm talking about. 7 to the left, go down 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3 would be right over here. You could go to negative 6 and then go down uh, negative 3.5. That would be you know, roughly about here. Negative 5, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Go down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would look just like so. You can begin to see that shape of your hyperbola already. Uh, as we take a look at, say, negative 3, we'll be at 1. We'll go three steps to the left, go up 1. Go two steps to the left, you'll actually be down at negative 0.5. Negative 1, 1, you go 1 to the left, you go down 1. And right here, you have an excellent idea as to what this graph is really looking at. I haven't even pressed graph just yet on the calculator. But just looking at these points, especially those friendly points, you have a very good idea as to what this graph would look like. Hitting graph, you'd get that confirmation that it looks something just like that. Uh, and then we're good to go. All right, one more graph on this page and then we'll be through. Take a look at number 9. Uh, go back to some x files. You've got this x minus 1 right here. Uh, change the sign. You'd have x equals 1 and x cannot equal 1 for the domain. Go to x equals 1 and draw in a dotted vertical line. Look at your second number here, a 3. 
don't change that sign at all. Type in y equals 3 for your horizontal asymptote. Your range would be y would equal, uh, would not equal 3, I'm sorry. So we'll go to three steps up. We'll just very quickly draw in this dotted horizontal line right here. And we're so amazingly close to having our graph worked out. Here we go again. All you need to do is type it in. We'll go alpha y equals. Type in negative 5. Down here we'll type in x minus 1. Type in a plus 3. And again, I like to hit math decimal, just converting everything to decimals. But if you go to your table, second graph, you would have guessed that we had a problem at x equals positive 1. And we do. You can see right there that that's the issue. And we can move about a little bit, and you can see that we've got that error right there. Uh, it looks like we'd have 0, 8. Looks like we also have negative 1, 5.5. But again, looking for friendly points, you can see at negative 4 would be at 4. Now, do you have to use that? No. Uh, but I do think that could be easier to graph. As you're looking just a little bit below your error, you could see we'd be at 2, comma, negative 2. Uh, right after that, we'd be at 3, comma, 0.5. But you might wonder if you scroll down, if you get a friendly point, you do, and that's at 6, comma, 2. Kind of like those friendlier points. If we go 4 to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4. Go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. We'd be right here. Uh, go 1 to the left. And then you'll go up 5 and a half. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then a smidge in between. At 0, we'll be all the way up at 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Way up here. 2, comma, negative 2. Go 2 to the right. Go down 2. 3 to the right, 1, 2, 3, go up just a half step. And then 6 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we could actually go up 2. And look at this. You can definitely see the curvature taking place. This is without even using your calculator to get a visual. Now, of course you should. Of course you should hit graph. But you will get confirmation of what we've just done, that that is in fact correct.